Okay, so what I'm going to do in this video is show you how to use jump uh, to, to work this my math lab Poisson distribution question. I believe this is one of the homework questions that uh, I assigned you in my my math lab. Um, you know, when you come to this question, um, you know, every time a different student comes, the it regenerates and changes the values inside the question. So, you know, when you get to it, you might see something a little bit different. But um, in general, it's it's the same thing. So let's give a look at this. It says the number of hits to a website follows a Poisson process. That just means that, you know, the, that we're allowed to use the Poisson distribution in order to work these probabilities. Hits occur at a rate of 0.3 per minute between 7 p.m. and 12 p.m. All right, so in, the, in this uh, time frame, um, they get 0.3 hits per minute on average. Given below are three scenarios for the number of hits to a website, okay? Uh, compute the probability of each scenario between 11.18 and 11.26 p.m. All right, so let's think about this for a sec. It says 0.3 per minute between those hours, right? So 0.3 hits per one minute. Now, they're not asking us for to work these probabilities in parts A, B, and C um, in a one minute time frame. If you look, this span right here from 11 to 18 to 11 26 is actually eight minutes. So what we need to do is adjust the value of the mean to accommodate the question we're looking at right now. So 0.3 hits per minute, we set up a little proportion here is, you know, how many hits, I'll write lambda, use it a variable there, per eight minutes. This little proportion will always work for you. I'm going um, hits to the website over minutes equals hits to the website over minutes. So 0.3 over one minute equals how many over eight minutes. Now, you know, this is kind of a common sense thing. I mean, if it's 0.3 per one minute and you want to know the, the number of hits over eight minutes, I mean, oh, Let's be honest, all you got to do is multiply. But if this um, were a little more involved where our minds couldn't see that, like maybe it was, um, you know, 0.3 hits per 30 seconds and we we're talking over, you know, uh, a 37 minute time span, our minds wouldn't be able to see that right away and we'd probably want a little formula to do that. And that's what this proportion does. So you cross multiply this and obviously you get lambda is equal to 8 times 0.3, which is 2.4. So that's 2.4 hits per 8 minutes. So here's the adjusted value of lambda that we're going to use when we're finding probabilities. All right, and that's the most important thing about the Poisson distribution. If they mess around with the time interval on you, you have to remember to adjust the value of lambda. If they would have talked about 0.3 per minute and the question would have been, hey, you know, it's the chances of, you know, um, one happening in the next minute, then you wouldn't have to do anything to lambda. You know, because they give you the average per minute and they're asking a question per minute. Here they're giving an average per minute and they're asking a question over eight minutes. All right, so let's look at letter A. Uh, the probability of eight hits over that time. All right, well, um, I would imagine that's pretty low, to be honest with you. Oh, actually, actually, you can see, sorry, I copied from my math lab the completed question, so you can see the answers in there. Uh, and if you look at the answer for letter A, it's very small, 0 0.0025, right? It's not even 1%. You might say to yourself, why is that so low, the chances of eight hits? Well, think about it. In the next eight minutes, they're expecting, on average, 2.4 hits. All right, so if you're expecting 2.4, what are the chances of getting eight well, uh, I'd probably say not so good. All right, so distribution-wise, remember how this looks. This is a probability distribution. Here is x, which is the number of hits. Here is the probability of x happening. There may be no hits, or one, or two, or dot, dot, dot. Here's one we're looking for, eight. But don't forget, it keeps going. Right now, we're looking for this probability, the probability of 8. So, letter A, the probability x takes on a value of 8. All right, so let's go to jump and ask it to work this probability. Now, naturally, we, you could use the formula that I gave you in the PDF notes. Um, you could also use the TI graphing calculator, but the purpose of this video is really to show you how to use jump. So I'm going to go to jump, and I'm going to go to my add-ins menu. And remember, we added a few... Um, add-ins and teaching modules 
and there's that distribution calculator we were working with in prior videos. All right, so let's look at the distribution calculator. <clears throat> so uh, we first thing we need to do is change the distribution to Poisson. So let's do that first and find it. They're in alphabetical order. So I'll switch to Poisson. And notice it, it changes all the inputs. All right, so the mean is the first thing we got to put in there. So the mean of the distribution is 2.4. And notice when you click somewhere else, I'm going to click over here. When you click somewhere else, notice the shape of the distribution changes. Um, that's because um, uh, this, this calculator in Jump, it, it crunches as you input. All right now, we need an exact value. And remember, in a prior video, I showed you how to use the exact feature for this calculator. It's a little bit annoying. It's this third button here. And then it gives you two values. So the value that you want, you always put in value two, which in this case, remember, is uh, eight. And then in the prior, for value one, you always put the value just before it. Now, we're not seeing this because it's so tiny. As you can see, it's a very low probability. Let me adjust the, um, the axes here, see if I could do that. Um, axis settings. I want you to see see it further. Yeah, see the maximum is only going to 8.5. What I did, if you're wondering, is I, I right clicked on the axis um, so that I could adjust it. I want to go further out there. Um, so I'm going to go to say like 12 or something like that. All right, as you can see, so if you give a, a, a close look right here, as you can see, the bar for 8 is a very, very low bar, naturally, because it's a very low probability. And as you can see, 0 0.0025. All right, so let's go back and give a look here. So this value, point, <clears throat> excuse me, point zero zero two five. All right. All right, so let's go to B. Uh, what is the probability that x is fewer than 8? So the probability x is less than 8. All right, well, that's going to shade the bars in that distribution to the left of 8, um, work out each individual probability, and then add them all up. In terms of the distribution picture over here, if you look at it, they're looking for this. All of these probabilities from 0 through 7. Remember, it says fewer than 8 not less than or equal to 8. So we're not including 8 here. We're going from 7 and backward. This is called the CDF function. The phrase is at most 7 is what we're looking for, which is um, very similar to saying fewer than 8. Mathematically, they give you the same exact answer, although when you say them, they're clearly different. Saying fewer than 8 and at most 7, are you are saying two different things. Now look at the answer for the probability before we even work it, 0.9967, which kind of makes sense. Uh, we're expecting 2.4. So what are the chances you're less than 8? Pretty darn good, being that we're expecting 2.4. All right, so let's run the jump. Go to the distribution calculator. The mean's not changing, still 2.4. However, we are going to work a less than scenario. So there's my at most button. But notice the option jump gives you. It only gives you less than or equals to. It doesn't give you strictly less than. So I want to work less than or equal to 7. Once again, notice um, that the axis reverted back to being a maximum of 8. It's a default setting. So if, if you want to change that, you have to right click on the axis and say axis settings, you know, and change it to be something different if you want to see more of the picture. All right, so um, it just happened to be, you know, we used 8 and 7 last time in the other input window. So this is exactly what I want. I want to know, hey, what's the probability of being at most 7? In other words, calculate the probabilities from 0 up to and including 7 and add them all up for me. And as you can see, when you add those probabilities up, you get 0.9967. I didn't have to put anything in the input field here because it was already there from the last problem. It was just dumb luck, to be honest with you. All right, so that's 0.9967. And as you can see, that's there as well, 0.9967. And that's all these probabilities summed, 0.9967. So that's all of these probabilities from 0 through 7 inclusive. Now, of course, we could have worked all these probabilities individually and, and, and added them up, but that would have taken us a bunch of time. All right, let us see. The probability of being greater than or equal to 8. So the probability 
x is greater than or equal to 8. All right, well, we kind of have all the work done here, to be honest with you. Um, if we know the answer for 7 and backward, then we could work the answer for 8 and forward, which is what this is asking, right? Letter C is asking, B, you know, what's the chances of 8 or more hits? Now, let's be honest. If 7 and backwards is 0.9967 of the entire 1, don't forget, the entire distribution sums to 1. If part B's answer, which is, you know, 7 and backward, is using 99.67% uh, of the 1, um, obviously there's not much left over for the rest of it. So, you know, this stuff in here, 8, 9, 10, dot, 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 onward, you know, including the dot, 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 just keep going. Don't forget this distribution, it keeps going on and on, right? In other words, 11, 12, 13, dot, dot, dot. This thing keeps going to infinity, and the probabilities, remember, just get smaller and smaller and smaller, which is why the distribution's heavily skewed right. You can tell that by looking at the picture. You know, the distribution's skewed right. If I do something ridiculous, like if I go here and go to Access Settings, and change this to something a little bit ridiculous, like say uh, 20 or 25, went well, on 225, like 25 say, and look at the picture, you can see the shape of the distribution. It peaks right away, and then all those probabilities, like past the bar of 8, you can't even see anything over there because the probabilities are so low because the, the probabilities converge to zero. And that's what's happening here. These probabilities on this table, they, they peak out right away, but then they get really tiny. And by the time you're at eight, that's a really small probability. All right, so um, there's not much to do here. So if all of these probabilities, remember all of them sum to one, and then from seven and backward is using up 0.9967, then you have to ask yourself, what's the result for eight and forward? All right, well, we could do that by going one minus the probability x is less than or equal to seven. So if you want the probability of eight and forward, take everything, which is one, and subtract off the probability of seven and backward. So this will be one minus the prior answer, 0.9967. And I'll just use my hand calculator really quick. And when you do that, you can see you get that 0 0.0033 number. Which means that all of these probabilities from 8, 9, 10, dot, 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 down to infinity, um, those are actually 0 0.0033. And remember, all these probabilities right over here from 0 to 7, that was 0 0.9967. And when you add those two numbers, of course, you get the whole distribution, which is 1. Now, jump, um, if you wanted to work this probability, the probability of being greater than or equal to 8, you know, directly, um, they don't have a, um, a greater than or equals to choice, as you can see. They have a less than or equals to choice, and they have a strictly greater than. So if you say strictly greater than 7, what does that mean? Being great, and I noticed the input value here is a 7. And I just did the second button, which is strictly greater than, not greater than or equals to. I want the answer for greater than or equals to, right? In other words, greater than or equals to 8. But if I, um, let me change the axis a little further so we go a little bit further here. <clears throat> so in other words, I want from 8 and forward, and you're not, again, you're not seeing these bars highlighted. You can't see them because they're so low. But um, if I tell the, if I trick the calculator here, say, you know, work out the probabilities greater than this value Q, or I said Q is 7, greater than 7, notice it's going to shade 8, 9, 10, dot, 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 and all these are technically shaded to infinity. And notice that probability is 0 0.0033. So you can work the, the, um, the at least scenario directly. This phrase that we're working right now, if I go back, you know, saying greater than or equal to 8, that's the phrase at least 8. So when you read this statement right here, you know, this thing, the probability of x being at least 8 is 1 minus the probability of x being at most 7. Or Plainly spoken, if you want the probabilities from, uh, if you want the probabilities eight and higher, take everything and subtract off seven and lower. All right, so I uh, hope this helped you out. If you have any questions, 